The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. better we have a foundation in Christ. I mean, a real one, a real foundation, not, not some phony baloney foundation, not a foundation so we look good, but a real one, that foundation of integrity and truth and just that absolute foundation where we are not shaken. We are planted very well, the better off we're going to be. So the Lord is going to shake everything up. And in our lives, he's going to draw a lot of things out of us. Everything that should not be within you, the Lord will draw out of you. So understand that. But he's got you. So listen, folks, the serpent who is Satan, because the initial question was, why does he do what he does? If he knows he's going to be destroyed, then why continue to pursue the saints? And why continue to jumble up everything? Why do this? Well, it says back in Revelation 12, the decree that now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. So Satan is cast out. He accused the brethren before God. Where did he accuse them at? Right there at the throne before God. Day and night he accused. He is the accuser of the brethren. That's all he does is accuse. That's why you'll hear no accusation in my mouth because I'm not going to replicate what this guy does. You can forget that. He is the one that accuses your brethren. You know what's so funny here? It says, listen to this. It says, for the accuser of our brethren is cast down. It didn't say for the false accuser of our brother is cast down. That's not what it said. It said the accuser. See, I know this. If Satan says, well, oh God, Michael has to be punished because Michael broke your commandments. That accusation is a real accusation. It is true. But then the Lord says, nope, I paid a price for that. Too bad. So he accuses you. And the Lord says, nope, I paid a price for that. And Satan says, well, they didn't accept you yet. And God says, well, I bestowed grace for that. Well, they might not select you at all. Well, I am merciful. So the accuser, listen to me, has no place in the heavens with God. Because what can he do there? He can't do anything. He cannot accuse you when God stands ready to forgive you. He cannot do it. He has no position in the heavens anymore. He cannot do it. So he's cast down to earth, and wouldn't you know it? Your brothers, the, the, your neighbors are the ones accusing you because Satan lost his mojo in the heavens. He can't do it before the one of all truth and light. He has no placement there because Jesus is there. And where Jesus stands ready to forgive, where grace and mercy is bestowed upon us, Satan cannot accuse you to the Father anymore. So what is he doing? He's having your brother and your sister accuse you, and he will try to have you accuse them. Well, I'll tell you this. I will not operate by his strength. I will not accuse you. Anyone who stands there and accuses another, they're not doing that by holiness. They're doing that by unholiness. And that's what Satan is doing. I'm not joining him with his stuff. I see, once you've been used by the enemy and you realize you've been used by the enemy, once you realize this and you're truly a saint, you'll say, no more, no, no, no more. He's not going to use me against anybody. That's why I purge anger. All these emotions. That's how he gets through to you. Emotion. He can augment your emotions. Make your emotions much stronger than what they actually are. And he can enter into you through those. As soon as you get mad at somebody, what do you hear in your mind? Accusation is what you hear. You hear him. His mouth is an accusation against everybody you know. That's who you hear. You hear him. And if you repeat what he is saying in your mind, then you're not working in the capacity of light anymore. But indeed, you are an affiliate of darkness in that moment. And I will not be used like that. So he's cast down. He has no position in the heavens anymore. None. Zip zero. Again, and I heard a loud voice saying, Now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of God. This is Revelation 12.10. In the power of our Christ, for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before God day and night. He unceasingly, he kept doing this. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. So when it says, when it goes, listen, Revelation 12.10 says, He was cast, the accuser of our brethren is cast down to the earth. So in the heavens, he accused them day and night. He was cast down to the earth immediately after the statement. It says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. He's talking about those in the earth, the ones, the same 
ones he's accusing. We overcome those. Now follow me on this, please. We overcome those accusations. How? By the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. And we're not here. We love not our lives unto death. We're not here to save our own lives. We're here to die to the flesh. See, because a lot of people have taken this to say, well, uh, they love their lives not unto death. They put their head on the guillotine, got it chopped off. Nope. To save your life is to salvage your lifestyle, to keep your lifestyle to keep your life like it was, to get back what you lost. When you become a new creature, you have a new path. You have a brand new life. You're not trying to resurrect all these old things of your old life. The Bible must be understood spiritually. So then spiritually, to save your life, not that of a physical life, but of a spiritual life, to save your life would be to savor, to keep your lifestyle. No, we've abandoned our previous lifestyle, becoming new creatures in Christ, having a brand new set of desires. We're not trying to save our lives. We're not trying to salvage our lifestyles. We're not trying to get back any of that stuff. Nope. We're walking into newness. Behold, all things are new. So if all things are new, you're not interested in saving what you once lost. Because all saints know you can never lose anything that truly belongs to you. How about that? You can't lose what truly belongs to you. So a saint does not have losses. It only looks that way. Do you guys understand that? They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives under death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down to you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. This is so funny. If you understand this spiritually, woe unto the inhabitants of the earth. Now, he just got finished saying they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. We know those are the ones. In, in order to overcome anything by the blood of the Lamb, you have to be a believer in Christ. So we can see a difference between those of flesh and those of spirit. Though we occupy the same space, you are in this world, not of this world. Therefore, you are not what is called this word when it says, woe, when the dragon was cast out, woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. Now, you thought that was you, didn't you? Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and to the sea. You really thought that was you, didn't you? You know what that word is? Those who abide. We don't abide in the world. We abide in Christ. Hallelujah. Not in the world, but in Christ. We don't live. We are not alive in the world. We're alive in Christ. Jesus taught us about this. The apostles taught us about this. The prophets spoke about this. We're not alive in the world. We're alive in Christ. So this word inhabitants, that means if you inhabit something, you that's where your abode is. That's where your life is. Well, guess what? We're not alive in the world. We don't live in the world. By meaning of this world, we're not. In it. God called us out of this world. And if he called us out of this world, we're no longer in it. Why do you think the emphasis is for you to walk in spirit, not in the flesh? Because if you walk in the flesh, to walk in the flesh is to live by the flesh. To walk in the spirit is to live by the spirit. And if you live by the spirit, you're not abiding in this world. And it's saying right here, right here, right now, woe unto the uh, woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. Well, guess what? We're not alive in the earth. We don't abide in the earth. We're not children of the flesh, nor of the sea of the people. For the devil has come down to you having great wrath, because he knoweth he hath but a short time. So, you know what Satan is doing here? Now, he starts utilizing all that he owns in the earth. That's why it's a woe unto them, because when Satan starts to use you, he will drain the life out of you, destroy you, destroy everything around you and everything else. But that's not us. He's talking about something else. Listen, and when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. He persecuted, what? What is that? Israel, the promised ones who brought forth a man-child. Israel, he persecuted. And the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness and into her place where she is nourished for time, times, and half a time from the face of the serpent. That's the disbursement or dispersal of Israel. The serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cast her to be carried away by the flood. Now stop. When, when the enemy comes at you like a flood, the Lord will raise up a standard against him. Do you know what a flood is? Anybody, do you know what a flood is? Well, see, in Revelation, it gives us a key that water means people. There are many peoples of earth, languages, tongues, all these different things. So Satan had all people come against her. 
but she escaped it. She escaped it because God made sure the earth opened up and swallowed up the flood that was against her. What is the earth? God's creation. So Satan manipulating people sent people after Israel over and over and over and over again. But the earth belong, is part of God's creation and it swallowed up that thing. So what is the earth here, guys? This means something because you have a beast that comes out of the earth. And I can tell you right now because you'll learn what these elements are. This same earth, it means something. For now, just know that God used it to swallow up all the people who were coming against Israel, which is why Israel is Israel today. It was dispersed for a while, 1948. General Assembly got together, put it all back together again. Boom, there it is. Even in, 19, uh, uh, in the 60s, the war, everything is put back together. Even the war, even the defenses are back. Everything is back. You ready? We're, we're going to continue. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that it might cause her to be carried away of a flood as a dispersal into all the people on the earth. Help the woman and the earth open her mouth and swallow up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth, angry with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. He went to make war with the remnant of her seed. The same remnant God mentions in prophecy. The same remnant spoken about Revelation, same remnant spoken about by the apostles. The dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Well, let me tell you something. In order to keep the commandments of God, that means you repent it. That means you're a new creature in Christ. You cannot keep the commandments being flesh. You can only do that being spirit. When you are of a born again spirit, that born again spirit is not guilty of breaking God's laws because it has no flesh. Hallelujah. It cannot break those laws. It will not interact with these things of flesh. So when you're walking in the spirit, you're walking as one who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. That means you believe in him. So you have a lot of folks out there that say keep the commandments, but they have left out Christ. You can't do that. Once you have broken one of the commandments, you're guilty of breaking them all. And without Christ, and if you're still in the flesh, you're still guilty of breaking the law. No, nothing can take that away. Jesus is the only sacrifice that can take that away. And so you have to have the testimony of Jesus Christ in order to keep the commandments of God. And you can only do that by way of the brand new spirit you are not the flesh. The flesh is con kaput, condemned, and everything else. That's why the Bible says there's no good thing in the flesh. That's what the Bible says. I'm not a defender of flesh, but Satan is because he would have you destroy yourselves. So he's an advocate for flesh and will make excuses for it. I will not. I won't do it. I choose the Lord's way. So as you guys can see, we're not done yet, but Revelation 2.17, Satan is so angry at the woman and he escaped her that now he's going to make war with the remnant of her seed. Those who believe in Christ. There it is. Listen, he's making war, it says, and he went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which, what, what seed? It's not just any seed. It's the seed that keeps the commandments of God and has the testimony of Jesus Christ. Well, the only way you can be one of these folks is to be a spiritual believer. Have that born again spirit. So he's making war with those who are born again. What do you think as soon as you dedicate your life to Christ? I mean, in truth. Bang! Here it comes. Stuff comes. Stuff comes. Stuff that we're ashamed to even talk about because it ruins our pride. Well, it doesn't ruin my pride. We're not going to have... I don't have favorable conditions in this world. I do not. I, I just don't. I'm doing things now. You guys say, well, why are you doing that? Because I have to. You wouldn't believe it. Things are tough everywhere, aren't they? What's going to be against me is going to be a little harder than what's against you. Because I still do this. And so guess what? I'm not going to be given an inch... I'm not going to have that uh, that moment off, that, that time where I can sit back and relax or even think about something real good. I'm going to be con just totally assaulted in every direction. I can be assaulted and just shut me up, to shut my mouth, to shut this place down. That's against us all the time. And it's certainly going to be against me. I'm, it's just like anybody who preaches the word of God. Your health is going to be attacked. Your home is going to be attacked. If you're married, your marriage is going to be attacked. Uh, your children are going to be attacked. And if you slip up in one area, I'm telling you, you're going to be, you're, you're going to be forced to be committed every day of your life. If you're true to what you're doing, you're not going to have a moment where you can sit there and relax, take a vacation, do this, that, and the other. Because as soon as you think you're going to rest in the world, Satan is going to come in through doorways you never thought existed. This is why our rest must be in Christ. And though it be a hard road, and though we have been beaten and battered down and everything else, 
We don't complain about it. When's the last time you heard a true minister of the Lord complain about his or her own life? You will not hear those complaints because they're driven by a spirit that is stronger than all. And that is the Holy Spirit. That is a trait of the Holy Spirit. Those who have been called by the Lord will continue to do what they do until the day they're not here. And people... They, they won't understand it. You wouldn't understand it if all of a sudden I vanished and, and come to find out I died. You'd say, oh, well, I thought he loved the Lord and this and the other. You wouldn't understand the process. Many wouldn't understand the process. See, that's why I like God's real story. I, I like the real story of Christ because it's not some, it, it is not the Hollywood version of what you think. This is for real. The assaults, the attacks, they are for real. The supernatural coordination against those who love the Lord, they are for real. And I'm telling you right now, Revelation 12, 17, I'm telling you what it says. And the dragon was wroth with a woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. There are two things. In our lives, we can mess up things. That's our mistake. But when you are assaulted by Satan, that's a different story. I've messed up a lot of stuff in my own personal life. I'm not talking about those things. No, I'm talking about the assault from Satan himself. So that means each day I set forth to walk in the ways of the Lord, Satan is making war with me. When you attempt to walk right with the Lord, Satan is making war with you. We war not against the flesh, but a principalities and powers. And folks, it is supernatural for those who teach, for those who preach. I'm just telling you what I know. Listen, you think the world is a friend of ours? No, it isn't. Because once you start standing for Christ, you cannot stand for their de de deceitful things anymore. And when that happens, when you're not playing well with those who employ you, you're not going to be employed. And they're going to sever things in your life. That, that more and more each day, there are ministers who have been in the service. They don't have retirement. They don't have anything. It's almost like the government found a way to get rid of these jokers. They count them as disruptors. I mean, they drain them dry, and then they find a way to sever their income when they leave. It's a shameful thing, but it happens all the time. But then you have some people who will become political. Oh, and they just, they keep those people propped up. But if you say, nope, I'm not going to be political. I'm not going to do this or to do that. I'm not doing that because I'm, I'm going the way of Christ. They'll say, well, get your paycheck from there then. But I'm telling you that you're going to have resistance every step of the way. So you should never act like that's some, you know, that that's a strange thing that comes against you. Now you got to wake up from that. Anyway, so now you see the dragon. Why is the dragon going after everybody? Because he's angry at everything God does. He does not like anything God does. He has anger against the woman who brought forth the man-child who was to rule the earth with a rod of iron but was called up to God. He has anger with this woman and now he's going against the remnant of her seed. But why is he so angry with the woman? Because God loves it. It belongs to the Almighty. And Satan within himself hates it. And he does everything to set it up to destroy it. And he's after it right now to destroy it until the end. And he knows he has but a short time. And he's doing everything he can to destroy it. So he has declared war against the saints and the remnant of her seed. He's declared war against those who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. He has declared war against those who walk in the spirit, which is why it was told to us God spoke it to his apostles to put on the armor of God, did he? We have Christ as our Redeemer. We have the Holy Spirit as our guides, the very Spirit of the living God. And the Lord said, don't turn away from this, because if you do, knowing that Satan is after you, if you give up on the Lord, he's going to kill you. He manipulated the others, but he wants to kill you, destroy you. He wants to destroy you because your Father in Heaven loves you. So let me tell you this about myself. When you find out that Satan is the one, he's the accuser of the brethren. Do you really think I'm going to help him out here on earth? Destroy my brothers and sisters by accusing anybody. Nope, I will not do it. I'm not going to mimic anything Satan does. Satan, by any means necessary, will draw people in to beguile them, to destroy them. He wants you destroyed. He promotes his own people in the field. All these people who work for Satan, who, have, who are loyal to Satan, those are the ones you see who go through life with such power and everything else. Remember that Satan has put his power seeking great authority in the earth. Remember that. So all those who seek power, 
who seek wealth, who seek these things in the earth. They're given that by whom? Satan himself. He's after you because God loves you. He is angry, upset with Israel. He's after the remnant of the seed, those of you who believe in Christ. He has declared war on you. And no one ever told you that. This is why Jesus speaks to us the way he does. That we won't get placement to the devil in our lives. Because if you do, he will kill you. And leaving this world, if he gets to you, you're suffering. If, you, if you're in the worst shape you could ever be in, while in life, that will not be compared to the suffering you will endure once you're out of this world. And we all know that means as soon as you die, you're going to go right into your punishment. He does not like you. He hates you. He wants you destroyed because God loves you. And he will attempt to get God back through you. He will destroy what God loves through you. Don't let him use you to destroy what God loves. And what does God love the most? His children. So that means when you're talking about somebody else, you're doing the same thing Satan is doing. When you're accusing somebody else, you're doing the same thing Satan is doing. When you take a stance against a person, you're doing the same thing Satan is doing. Jesus came for the opposite reason, to deliver, to set the captive free, to give sight to the blind, those who can't see, those who can't comprehend, those who refuse to believe things of faith. God came to give them sight. He sent his son to give them sight so that they could see. And always, instead of criticizing those with these churches, now you may be a blessing in this earth. And do you know what? I'll tell you this. If the accusations leave your heart, your life at home is going to change. Things at home will change. Problems at home will be overcome. The Lord will start a deliverance in you. You never thought possible. Many of you have gotten used to a rottenness in your life. And it's been a long time since you have truly been able to rest. Don't lose hope in that. God can do that right now if he wanted to. But who would he grant rest to? I'll tell you who. Those who actually choose his ways over all other ways. Those who truthfully choose him. Because if he gives rest to a corrupted person, that person will become more corrupted in their rest. And they will be lost to the Lord forever. That's why he doesn't want to lose you. He cannot give you good things when your heart's in the wrong place because that would promote darkness in your life. He wants you to know that light is your home. So he won't promote anything of darkness in your life. He's not going to reward you for having darkness in your life. He loves you. So he normally strips us when we have darkness in our lives that we may see that darkness is death and that he is life. Notice also in the last days perilous times shall come for men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous, boast, proud, blasphemous. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved if you're not willing to repent? And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.